Is it really worth it? Is a thought that has crossed everyone's mind at least once. That is that voice that comes to you when your pragmatic mind fights your heart's desires. Is it really worth it? Seven years ago I was climbing a wall and my meniscus slipped in my knee because I'd been caught in a dodgy judo throw. And my brother asked me because I was sitting on the grass trying to put it back into place so I could straighten my leg again. And he asked me, is this jujitsu thing? Is it really worth it? To me, it felt like he had kicked me when I was down. And I reflected on it for a moment. Is it? Like, is it really worth it for me? At that point, I gained nothing from the sport. I was a fresh blue belt, full of injuries that I took way too personally. No one understood or supported me. All I had was the feeling that this was the thing I wanted to do for the rest of my life. There was no logic behind it. I wasn't an athletic guy. I was a nerdy guy in my 20s who played Warhammer by day, World of Warcraft by night. I was working in IT, leaving the server room just to go back to the computer to play more video games. Yeah, I play video games in the server room. The paycheck was good. The career options were endless. From an outside perspective, it seemed that my life was sorted inside I was dying. I hated my job. The only thing I did enjoy was the training. And oh boy, I enjoyed the training. <laughs> the thing is though, that eventually if you don't find your passion, it will find you. Whether you're a depressed 45 year old with a fantastic career or an old man on his deathbed, it will find you and drown you in an ocean of regret if you don't act upon those feelings. Oh well, sure, thanks mate, but what do I do? Well, you do what gives you energy, what fills you with excitement and keeps you awake at night. I saw many people get be tricked into thinking that money is their passion. So often money gives you that initial thrill and excitement. But the thing is, money is also an energy, the tool that helps you do what you really love to do. So think, on what do you spend your money? Expand your thoughts beyond the excitement of a big paycheck and reflect on what makes that paper seem so appealing. Is it the fact that you can afford certain things, experiences? Maybe it's the feeling of power. Or you like to hold on to money and make investments. What interested you as a child? What can you do easily what others struggle with? Clues can be found in these feelings. So money on its own doesn't make people happy. We know this. Hence we see so many highly successful people yet very depressed. Sometimes finding your passion and doing it for money also won't work for you. My wife is a great example of this. She's an artist, but she absolutely can't work for people. Creating fills her with joy and energy. But if she works under contract, she turns into a depressed office worker in no time. Working for someone isn't for everyone. Same as being a digital nomad or a freelancer or an entrepreneur. It's not everyone's cup of tea. Try what works best for you. It might be that your own belief system is holding you down. So often we have an outside image of what is deemed to be a success, but it doesn't resonate with us. For some reason, a huge amount of people want to be these business sharks in fancy suits with million dollar companies, as this is the image of an achieving person since skyscrapers were built and Wall Street became a thing. In reality, this type of lifestyle won't work for the majority of people. Luckily, we live in a beautiful age and you can make money from literally anything. But for some reason, we are told this certain type of behavior is successful and we desperately mimic it throughout our lives and so often end up confused, depressed and hopeless and kind of aimless. When the shoe doesn't fit, it just doesn't fit. Your passion is not something rational. It is just something that you like to do. Your passion might not even be as much on the surface as you think. Allow yourself to explore things you enjoy doing without any attachments. Don't think about how you can monetize your activities Learn to listen to yourself. When I just started training, my very first martial art was actually Muay Thai. And at the time, I thought that I loved this so much just because it was the first time I felt alive. I felt strong for the first time. I felt agile and confident. Reality hit me when I got seriously injured. You see, me and my friends, we used to spar like meatheads, okay? We used to just try and take each other's heads off with every punch. And there's a reason why all coaches will tell you not to do this because it ends with you going to brain surgery twice. So we used to spar like there is no tomorrow. Every sparring session was like a full on fight. I got seriously rocked by a head kick and walked with the trauma for weeks, courtesy of, of the great Irish health system and doctors who disregarded tunnel vision and splitting headaches as a normal post concussion symptom. Until I went to the optometrist to check my eyes, as at that point I couldn't focus or see clearly in front of me. 
The woman that checked me was so terrified that she closed her shop and rushed me to the hospital. And that was what saved me, as I was having a major bleed in the subdural layer of my brain. Post-op, I was crushed. I'd had holes in my cranium, slight memory issues, no real achievements in the first thing that actually thrilled me in my life. All I'd had was my safe and secure IT job and two holes in my head. <laughs> so after about six months of recovery and trying to get back to the gym, I finally got back to a BJJ class with the hope that after I recover, I could return to sparring one day. Fortunately, I never did. Instead, I understood what is my true passion in life. Loving strategy games and complex fantasy books since my earliest years, I obviously fell in love with the real life combat that MMA and Muay Thai and striking martial arts offered. But everything was overshadowed by the complexity of Jiu Jitsu. Striking is like learning to dance, it's very physical, but for me it lacked the challenge of the mind. Jiu Jitsu on the other hand is like human chess. It pushes you physically as much as it does mentally. I think BJJ is the perfect martial art for nerds and those cerebral minded people like me. It's like playing magic in a real life situation, but with chokes and dislocated limbs in your hand instead of mana. It's great. <laughs> so what you've got to do is try and find your own personal BJJ. Same as me, you might think that you just like video games, but that doesn't have enough footing to make anything out of it. Well, unless you're the best at Fortnite, let's say. Dig deeper. What do you like about video games? Is it strategy? Story? The feeling of involvement? For me, that was definitely a strategy, kind of battle planning, PvP mainly, anything against other people. So naturally, it was a great base for my greatest passion in life, even though I thought it was completely unrelated to begin with. Saying that, I don't suggest you go through major neurological surgery to find yourself. I'm just saying that when it hits you, pardon the pun, you'll understand it. Your logical mind will scream at you that now it's time to quit. You've gone too far, this is uncomfortable. Go find something normal, safe or stable. Stay at your work, make a career, forget about your dream, you had enough. But you know what you can't run away from? You can't run away from yourself. If you want to stop chasing happiness and actually be happy, stop settling down for comfort or other people's perception of you instead of your own perception of yourself. So was it worth it for me? Well, yeah. I've got everything I have from pursuing my dream. My wife, my health, my strength and confidence. So dream big and don't be afraid to be different. And see you in the next video. Thank you for watching till the end. Us.